Hello everybody, John here with Shooting Tips and Tricks and today I'm going to cover plastic gun parts or more specifically polymer gun parts. I'm going to be going over how they're made and what types of material to use to make them. Now, most all of these parts here with exclusion of this Glock frame and this little wrench here are made out of glass fiber reinforced polymers. Now I'm not as positive on it but I'm willing to bet that they use a P86 type of polymer. And then the Glock frame and this little hogue wrench here are made from a pure polymer. Now the first off the machine that they use to make these is an injection molded machine and um, it's a big machine I mean some of them I've worked with are from one end to the other 15 feet long but the one they use to make a lot of these parts like this little grip or a magazine is a smaller machine it's probably a 10 or 15 ton pressing force now in the middle of the machine you have a rent or you have the head and on one side is the cabinet with the actuator that opens and closes the mold. And then the head, or also called the stationary plantain, I think I'm pronouncing that right, is what holds one half of the mold. And the movable plantain is attached to the actuator. And that's what opens and closes the mold. And on the other side of the head you have the, you have the barrel, which runs on a... Um, on a track to open and close so you can access the port that goes through to the mold and inside of that drum is a large screw and on top of it is a hopper that holds all your plastic and it's basically when the screw opens the plastic drops in there's a heating coil around the barrel that heats the plastic up and then the screw goes forward and it forces the plastic or the molten plastic through the hole into the mold and it and it's under significant force um, usually they go by tons like the smaller machines are 10 to 15 ton some of the bigger ones 20 30 ton some of the ones they make use for big parts are like 60 80 ton now the most basic mold you're gonna see is stuff used for like these this little Hogue two-piece wrench here and this is just a two-piece mold opens and closes drops parts out when they're done and if you look at any molded part there's a few features that give away how it was made and, the main, and one of them is all these little indents here I'll show you a little closer so there's indents all over here and they're out here and even way out on the end. These are push pin marks. Now the push pin is inside the movable plantain and what happens is when it's um when the plantain's closed there's a gap about usually about like that big between the mold and the head or the plantain and when the mold opens that gap collapses and the pins push through into the mold and that's what knocks the part out. So that's why they have these on all these spots here. So they get an even push across the part and don't cause any twisting or breakage on it. Now, on the other part of the part, you'll see this little gnarled spot right there. That's the ejection port. That's basically the opening on the mold where the plastic goes through the head and into the mold cavity. And all parts have those. You can see this little half has the injection port there, has the pin marks here. And you can tell polymer parts because they have a good deal of flex to them without breaking. But it's a soft flex, unlike plastic parts that feel like they're going to break when they flex. Now getting into the more detailed molding process we get into our magazines and even this grip here now I'll start with the grip because it's a pretty basic one and these use a multi-part mold 
where basically you have the main two halves of the mold that open and close but you also have inserts and on this grip you'd have an insert that goes into the top and one that goes up into the bottom and that's how you get these cavities so then when the mold opens part drops out they pull the inserts out those go back into the mold and they toss the part into the bin now and that's the same with magazines as well like this Tapco mag and this Magpul mag it's just the uh, like this Magpul is going to use a large insert that goes up into the cavity here and it goes all the way up to the top and it probably has a mounting bracket up on this end that fits through the feed lips so after the parts done it'll drop out and they'll yank the insert out and just with all others you look at it it's got your pin marks here and then the little bottom plate has the ejection port right there and yep and I'm not sure where the pin marks are on it probably on the inside but on this guy the injection port would have been right here but you can see they filed it off it's a nice little feature with better parts and even this little cover plate you got the injection mark there and pin marks are probably inside yep there's the ejection pin or the push pins yep so that covers that guy and this tapco is going to be about the same now if you wonder why this tapco's look different than the magpole as far as the texture and the look well that's just because they run the mold colder with these so it doesn't get that molten smoothed over look when it goes into the mold machine and that's a to save money on power and preserve the life of the mold because you run them hotter they wear out quicker because the hotter the metal gets the softer it gets and most molds are made out of aluminum so Heat is one of the enemies for it. It absorbs heat really easy, but once it gets past a certain temperature, it starts to soften up. Now, I'll go into this guy. It's a CMMG 22 mag. You can see, like with other parts, you got your little injection ports there. But interesting thing with this. It's got a little pin in there to restrict it for California. Now when you look at the inside of this guy, you can see all these track marks going along here. And they're even down in the cavities here. And there's all your push pin marks from the mold. But all these track marks are passes that were made with a milling machine. Now they didn't mill this part because that wouldn't be cost effective. But these are repair marks done on the mold after it wears out you get like little dimples and pitting and stuff like that and what they'll do a lot of times is actually weld over that area to fill it and then they'll put it on the milling machine and shave it off flat and that's where you get these little mill passes on here because you see like on this one you have a couple little mill passes here and a couple up here and then right in here is your regular texturing right. now this polymer 80 frame as with any other it's done pretty much the same the only difference is the quality of the work so on these guys it's a lot harder to find but there's push pin marks on here they're really faint there's one up here there's one here one down here and there's one over here in the corner and a couple down here on the grip and the injection port is actually right up underneath the trigger guard in here let's see if I can yep there it is and these guys use I'm not positive but I'm willing to bet it's a four piece mold but it might even be in a, a fifth piece that goes up in the front here but they have an insert that goes in through the top, one through the bottom. And on these, you can actually see it if you look down inside there. It's about halfway down. You can see a little seam that 
goes from one side to the other and then up and around and it's got like a little shelf right on this side and on the opposite side and that's where the two halves of the pieces come together and then after the molding process they take it out of the mold pull the inserts out put those back in the mold and start over again then we move on to some Glock parts if you look at these guys there's seams going everywhere I mean it's up the sides, across, down, over but as with most any parts they're done about the same now I can't say for sure but what I'm willing to bet that Glock did with this to save money is they use a mold with inserts so basically what it is is they have their mold cut to the basic shape and there's metal or there's aluminum or steel inserts that snap in all around it so what happens then is that creates some more seams because you have a separate piece of metal but what it also does is it saves them a lot of time because then if any part of the mold wears out they can just pull out that insert and pop another one in and then continue on work then up at the top here you have these little dimples here and here I'm willing to bet that those as well as this are meant to hold the metal the metal core in place while they over mold the plastic now another one with um, when you hear about like over molded parts basically all those are is they, like on a Hogue stock, they have the overmolded rubber. It's basically inside is a polymer part just like this. They mold that part and then they put it into another mold that holds that part and then injects the rubber molding that surrounds the outside and bonds to the underlayer. So that's basically how those are done. It's one more step and it's a pretty simple process. You can see even this little bottom plate is same as any other. There's a little tiny injection port down the bottom there. Yep. So that's about it for the whole process. And I've had people ask me before the difference between like a Glock frame and like the P80 frames. Like the difference between a pure polymer and a fiber reinforced. The pure polymers, the process Glock uses, um, it's a chemical process that strips the oxygen from the polymer, making it stronger. And, you, um, and it saves them having to use a fiber reinforced polymer, but it also does make it flexible. You see like this front, you can actually flex them when you torque on them a little bit and then, like these parts which are cheaper polymer they're nice and flexible and this Glock frame is done just like any other the only difference is the quality of the work so it has a seam going up the middle and they use the inserts for it as well the Glock logo since it's nice and smoothed over and squared that's going to be an insert on the mold as well as this guy here and then they're going to have a part of the mold that holds these rails in place when they inject the plastic. And it's really hard to see the pin marks on these guys. Well, there's one that's real obvious down here. But other than that, I haven't been able to find any. They probably let it cool down in the mold before they take them out, which would negate that, that and just the quality of the molds. And that's another one too with the actual mold it has water ports going through it so that as soon as the plastic is injected in they have cold water continuously pumping through and that cools the plastic rapidly so that they can knock the part out in a matter of probably 30 seconds or so 40 seconds you know and then they can close the mold back up and start all over again and if you ever get messed up parts, like every now and then you'll run into a 
one of these polymerades. I've heard of a few people getting some really weird ones. Um, usually what happens then is if the company has a quota and they're behind a little bit, they'll actually speed up the mold process by shaving a couple of seconds off, like three to five seconds. And in the during the course of a day, that saves them hours of work and they get much more parts done. But what happens is shaving off that time makes the mold heat up more. So when they're running cycles, the mold isn't going to be able to cool down between cycles all the way. So eventually it'll get really hot and they'll spit out a hot part. And that will, when it cools, it'll be all kind of funky and a little bit off. Because when they make these parts, they have to take into account cooling too. Because you can mold the part to one shape when it's hot. When it cools, it's going to twist, it's going to shrink, and all of that. So they have to take all that into account when they make these to get them to fit just right. Alright, well I think that covers about everything. And if you guys got any questions, you can let me know in the comments or want to add anything to the issue and as always if you like the video there's a button right over there if you didn't like it well there's a button right over there all right and thank you all for watching and i'll see you next time bye